Hello and welcome to The Game Plan, where we bring you in-depth analysis of the greatest game of all you won't find anywhere else. I'm Zach Bailey, joined by Anthony Siebold. Siebs Origin 3 next Wednesday night. The biggest talking point, Mitch Moses gets his debut in the number seven jersey for the Blues. Let's compare him against Nathan Cleary, who is missing. How will he go in the Origin arena? He wants a well-deserved debut, probably a couple of years after he was first touted to play for the Blues. I think he's a very much a, a like-for-like replacement uh, for Nathan Cleary, particularly when you look at their running games and, and also compare their kicking games. So I think it's a good addition to the Blues side. Uh, well-deserved debut for Mitchell Moses. All right, let's start with that point. The running game, Mitch Moses, when he plays for the Eels, he causes all types of headaches for the opposition defensive line. Yeah, it's a real weapon in his game. He's made over 30 tackle breaks this year off the back of his show and go. And this is an example from a few weeks ago against the West Tigers. There's Mitchell Moses, shows on the outside, takes the inside shoulder of Billy Wallace there in the number 19 and makes the line break down the field. Obviously, he's got great support there through Gutherson and also Wonga Blake, but does it all himself. Now, I think he'll bring that running game to... Uh, next Wednesday night. He'll threaten the Maroons' edge defence, particularly on their left-hand side. This is another example. It was the uh, Magic Weekend at uh, Brisbane a number of weeks ago playing against the Warriors. You'll see he's actually a right-hand carry. So he will be suited to the right-hand side of the field for the Blues. He goes through there with a show-and-go fantastic play and finds Regan Campbell-Gillard on his inside shoulder to put him underneath the stick. So I really like that about his game there, Zach. As I said, over 30 tackle breaks. It's going to be really important for the Blues next Wednesday night to threaten. You just mentioned there, Seebs, that he might be suited to the right, but he plays his club footy with the Eels on the left-hand side. So how will he find that transition back to the right, given Jack Wyden will uh, play on the left-hand side for the Blues? It'll be a little unfamiliar for him from a defensive point of view because, as you say, he's been playing on the left-hand side for Parramatta this year. But if you look back to recent seasons, he's always played on the right-hand side for, for the Parramatta Eels. So it's back to uh, the future, so to speak, there for Mitchell Moses. Uh, Brad Arthur decided to s swap him and um, Dylan Brown this year. So he won't be he won't be in unfamiliar territory. I, don't, I do think it um, helps his attacking game with regards to his kicks. He's a right-foot kicker, but also he carries the ball in his right hand. So... Um, we said his show and goes are effective. I think it will help him being back on the right-hand side. The other thing I want to point out, Zach, is New South Wales Blues have had um, you know, plenty of opportunities by getting the foreign defenders for the Queensland side involved in the tackle. And what they like to do is then play on the keep going. And I found an example, and you can find a number of examples of this in Mitchell Moses' game. Again, this is from the West Tigers a few weeks ago. They get the foreign defender inside the tackle, and you'll see there's Mitchell Moses out the back of shape and if I just identify Mitchell there he's got a couple of options obviously he's got the option to hit Sevo but he does have a really effective running game as we suggested and this time he takes on the West Tigers right hand side defence goes through there puts Sevo away into the left hand side corner for the Parramatta Eagles now expect Mitchell Moses to, to do that but for the Blues on the other side of the park so if we're trying to compare what it might look like just imagine the edge back rows for um, the, the Queensland Maroons on Wednesday night getting inside the tackle. So in the last game, that was Jai Arrow. Uh, it'd be potentially Capewell this particular time. But getting Capewell and the back rows in the tackle, like Kafusi and Capewell, and then getting Mitchell Moses an opportunity up the short side. So you'll see here Nathan Cleary a few weeks ago in game two. Show and go, very, very similar to that of Mitchell Moses. So I expect them, uh, the Blues, in saying them, to adopt the same tactics. Get four in defenders in Kate Well and Kafusi in the tackle and allow Mitchell Moses to get up the short sides. And obviously he's got Tom Trebojevic on one side of the field and also Latrell Mitchell on the other side of the field. So really effective replacement, I think, in Mitchell Moses from an attacking perspective. And I guess one of the real strengths of Mitch Moses' game on that edge and trying to beat those edge defenders will be his speed. But we've got to turn our attention to his kicking game because Nathan Cleary is probably the best in the business when it comes to isolating defenders, putting them under pressure with those midfield bombs and, you know, putting them up those massive spiral kicks. Yeah, certainly. Nathan Cleary's one of the best in the competition at the moment. After Cooper Cronk, I think he's the best kicker that I've seen, uh, certainly in recent times. But Mitchell Moses and the Parramatta Eels score so many points and have uh, so many kick breaks um, that they achieve off the back of Mitchell Moses' kicking game. And I think, um, you know, his high kicks in particular, if I show you some examples here, his high uh, kicks in particular put the back three of opposition teams under some pressure. So here it is against the Penrith Panthers uh, last Friday night. 
Uh, I believe he gets an opportunity there off the back of that uh, bouncing ball for Staines. But he puts back three opposition teams under pressure. And I think he'll use that weapon to his advantage. Obviously, Callum Ponga, uh, Valentine Holmes, and also Xavier Coates for the Queensland. So we'll be put under plenty of pressure. And this is what I've seen in the recent games, game one and game two. Xavier Coates has played one game on the right edge for the Queensland side and second game on the left edge. But both times, Nathan Cleary wanted to kick on Xavier Coates' head. So this is an example from game one um, in Townsville. And there it is on Xavier Coates' head. Obviously, Latrell Mitchell picks up the scraps, but they were trying to do that to stop Xavier Coates' running game. This time in game two at Suncorp Stadium, Nathan Cleary again is looking for Xavier Coates in the backfield. And there's Xavier. So I would imagine that Xavier will probably play back on his um, you know, right-hand side, which he does for the Brisbane Broncos. But wherever he is, expect Mitchell Moses to put high kicks onto Xavier Coates' head and then the kick chase team of the Blues to try and uh, pick him up and, and drag him back. So there, Xavier's under plenty of pressure. So I think they'll adopt the same sort of mentality there in um, Game 3 with regards high kicks on Xavier Coates. OK, so that's the uh, high kicks sorted. What about the cross-field kicks? Because... They've got some great targets out wide, Latrell Mitchell, Tom Trebojevic, when it comes to their kicking game, I guess inside that 20, 30 metre line when they're looking to score points. Yeah, often at club level, what we see, Zach, is halfbacks kicking for their wingers when they you know, do those crossfield kicks. But I think they'll kick where Tom Trebojevic on the right and Latrell Mitchell on the left can get into the contest. And I've actually found some examples. Parramatta do it pretty well. Um, they score a lot of tries. Now, if I go back to, to, um, to game... Um, one in games two, Nathan Cleary was definitely kicking for Tom Trebojevic and also Latrell Mitchell. As the clip plays through, you'll see the, the chaser in the picture there is Tom Trebojevic. Obviously, he's left his right-hand side of the field, but they're trying to give him an opportunity to get inside the tackle there. Sorry, get inside the contest on the on the kick um, on the crossfield kick, and I think that's what they'll do. Um, effectively on Wednesday night. Mitchell Moses will take the place of Cleary there and, and you know, he'll put the Queensland side under plenty of pressure, but he's got some fantastic kick targets. You can see this time kicking for Latrell Mitchell with regards to a cross-field kick. Um, and if we go to club level, again, here's Mitchell Moses kicking for this time in Cartwright on the left-hand side of the field. Think of Cartwright in that particular position as being Latrell Mitchell. And as I said, if he's kicking to the right-hand side, there's no better person to kick to than... Obviously, Tom Trebojevic, um, you know, the right-hand side there for the Blues. So expect those cross-field kicks. This is Mitchell Moses again at club level, kicking for Madison there in the, in the number 12. Cartwright picks up the scraps. And I expect plenty of cross-field kicks for Latrell and also um, Tommy Turbo on Wednesday night. And, and we've spoken about on the game plan in the past is they, they kick to that little, I guess, that, that area between the back row and the centre to create confusion. So Mitch Moses... He's great at a club level, as you said, but does he have the ability to adapt into the Origin arena when there's a lot of pressure on him? You know, players are going to be shooting out of the line to put, you know, put him on his backside, whether it's Tino, whether it's Josh Papali'i. These big bodies are going to be coming at him probably harder than ever. Yeah, I think the big challenge for Mitchell Moses is to, uh, you know, be able to execute his kicking game when there's a men's kick pressure on him. Now, I expect Christian Welsh to put the most kick pressure on Mitchell Moses next Wednesday night. Those cross-field kicks are really effective, but you can see in some of the examples, um, you know, the kick, when the kicker has time, he can execute it effectively. When he doesn't have time, the, the kick execution is a little bit skewed. So expect Christian Welsh to come hard from the inside on Mitchell Moses and try to disrupt his kicking game. But we can see there high kicks, cross-field kicks, very similar to Nathan Cleary. Gets a lot of success for the Parramatta Eels. In actual fact, Parramatta score more tries from kicks than any other team in the competition. So I expect Mitchell Moses to bring that weapon from club level to state of origin level, but he needs to be aware there's going to be immense kick pressure from Christian Welsh in particular. Yeah, and the, the Panthers also love scoring tries from kicks, especially when it comes to putting them along the grass. Nathan Cleary, Jerome Luai have been great at club level and great at origin level as well. Yeah, certainly. So, again, if I identify where Nathan Cleary is, he will play on both sides of the field um, for Penrith and also the Blues. So expect Mitchell Moses to appear on both sides of the field. I would expect Jack White to play predominantly on the left-hand side there for the Blues. So expect Mitchell Moses to be in the number seven on that side of the field. But Nathan Cleary is very good at finding space and putting teams under pressure with his grubber kicks. I think you can see there putting Valentine Holmes under pressure. But there's Mitchell Moses at club level. Um, in particular, you know, against the Bulldogs a few weeks ago, putting the Bulldogs team under enormous amounts of pressure. And what that does, it, it 
it builds pressure on the opposition defensive team. You fatigue when you have to do lots of defense. So I think one of the things that Mitchell Moses can do is replicate Nathan Cleary's grass kicking game, uh, where he puts grubber kicks in the end goal, and he'll put Valentine home, Xavier Coates, and also, in particular, uh, Callum Pong, on enormous pressure with those grass kicks next Wednesday. Yep, no doubt he will. He will uh, want as many repeat sets for his mighty blues in his first time in Sky Blue. Uh, Jack Whiten, he moves from the utility option off the bench to wear the number six jersey for the blues for the first time. It's not unfamiliar in terms of playing in the 5-8 position. He plays there for the Raiders. He's a Dalian medal winner from last year playing in that position, but he hasn't been at his best. So how will he find that transition from that utility option coming into the game when it's been dead in the first two matches so far this series to having an impact from the get-go and supporting Mitch Moses? It's a little bit different in Jack Whiten's case. You know, Jack's been on the bench for games one and game two. So he's been in camp with the, you know, the, the leading ball players, um, you know, from the New South Wales Blues side. So he'll he'll have his role um, nailed. And he's also spent the last couple of years inside the New South Wales Blues team as well. So I don't think it'll be a problem for Jack to start the game in the number six Obviously, he plays on the left-hand side for the Raiders. So expect him to be that link player between you know, Mitchell Moses and Latrell Mitchell in particular on the left-hand side of the field. I don't think you'll see Jack White and Bob up too often on the right-hand side of the field. But if we look at his club form, his biggest threat for me, again, is his running game. He's a very big body, used to play fullback, has played in the centres at state of origin level. And if you look at when he plays his best footy for the Raiders, he takes the line on. This is an example uh, earlier this year in round two, in actual fact, against... Um, sorry, round three against the uh, New Zealand Warriors. He takes the line on. He's a big presence and he's a big body. Again, this game against the uh, the Brisbane Broncos in Canberra earlier this season, he finds himself in a little bit of space. He's a left-hand carry, but he comes back through the middle of the park there of the Brisbane Broncos team and, and you know, scores under the post. So his big body is going to be a threat for the Queensland team. The thing I think that um, Jack Whiten's improved, Zach, over the last two seasons in particular is his ball-playing ability. But there's certainly a trend that I've found. Latrell Mitchell will sit on the left-hand side of the field for the Blues, but I, I can't see Latrell getting a lot of football off um, you know, Jack Whiten on a short ball. If we look at his club uh, form and, and the trend in particular, he loves playing that long ball to wrap it up. And this is a couple of examples. So obviously when George Williams was still in the halves, it feeds the uh, the ball onto um, you know Jack Wyden, who puts Rapinara away. Now a very similar example against the Cowboys from a few weeks ago, on a short field position play. There's Jack Wyden in the number six, out the back of shape there for the uh, the Raiders team. Gets the ball off, off Starling. Now he's got Jared Croker t- with the short ball option, or he's got Rapinara with the long ball ab- option, and he actually decides to play the long ball to Rapinara. Now I think that uh, Brian Tuhu, um, Tuhu, sorry will get plenty of ball from Jack White on Wednesday night. Now, how he feeds the ball to Latrell Mitchell will come down to some of their combos they work on with training. But if you have a look at this example here, putting the the left-hand side winger for the Canberra Raiders so into the corner, I think that'll be the trend. He'll either take the line on or he does like to play that cutout ball. So expect plenty of that against the Maroons next week. But, Steve, isn't that one of the Blues' strengths, getting early ball to Latrell Mitchell? Because Jerome Luai, yes, he's a great runner of the footy as well, but he, he chose the right moments to get the ball to Latrell and be that strike weapon on the left. So, Jack Whiten, yes, he's a great ball runner. Yes, he can throw the cutout, but surely he needs to nail those passes to Latrell Mitchell. I think what you'll find out of Yardy, so when the New South Wales Blues team are coming off off their line, so in their end of the field, I think you'll find still they'll get at four in defenders. So they'll get at Felice Kafusi there as the right edge back row for the Queensland side. And then what you'll see then is you'll see um, Whiten or Mitchell Moses uh, come up the short sides with, with Latrell Mitchell. That's when you'll see that short ball to Latrell. Think back to game one and game two, and they'll create momentum up that short side. Down closer to the line, because Queensland... Uh, in particular, Xavier Coates in game one. If he's the right winger, uh, and Dane Gago as well, they're quite aggressive coming off the line. So they'll try and land hard on the ball players if Tedesco's out the back, and they'll try and land on Latrell Mitchell as well. So I do think closer to the line, you'll see some long balls to the left-hand side winger for the Blues. But you're right. You need to see uh, Latrell Mitchell get some footy. I think he'll get most of his footy. Uh, in yardage, when they're coming out of yardage, creating momentum. But closer to the line, just watch out for Jack White's face balls to his, to his winger.
Yeah, still, uh, those attacking threats, Latrell Mitchell, Tom Trebojevic, Mitch Moses, Jack White and the Maroons have got a massive task in stopping those four attacking threats. Add in a couple of others in the Fox, Brian To'o, and they've got a huge night ahead yeah. of them. As does Caelan Ponga as he returns to the Origin Arena, his first match this series. Uh, but, Sebs, you work with him closely at Newcastle. Uh, he returned against the Cowboys on the weekend and he, he didn't look like he's missed a beat. Yeah, very um, efficient and effective performance from Carlin on the weekend. I thought he was outstanding. He was, he was the Newcastle Knights' best player and probably a little bit, um, you know, like some other teams in the competition. When you get your best players in the park, certainly it increases the strength of your team. Now, um, people would have seen his ability and attack on Saturday night against the Cowboys, but the biggest thing that impressed me was his line organisation in defence. And it was something that we highlighted that would have been a challenge for Reese Walsh in game two before he was pulled out. It's certainly been a challenge at club level and at origin level for Valentine Holmes. The fullbacks for um, teams in rugby league, they're the defensive captains. They organise the defensive splits. They organise where players um, will shape up when they're returning to the line and reloading to the line to get off the defensive line. So Callum Pong is very good. He's very smart with regards to um, you know, setting the, the, the line organisation of his team. So he'll bring that, but... Again, I want to point out some attacking weapons that he will bring to the Queensland side. And I think he's going to help Cherry Evans and Munster in particular. So here he is on the left-hand side for the Knights. Earlier this year, in actual fact, it was his last game before his return to uh, the Knights team uh, versus Cowboys. And um, you'll see him in the left-hand side here for the Knights, playing against the, um, you know, the Raiders earlier this year. If I just take him back at just a fraction, um, he's a real threat because people know that he can ball play, but he also can take the line on. And as I said, um, you know, he's going to be a real threat. He's going to be an option out there along with Cameron Munster. You can see him there. Good show and go. Think of, of him there on that left-hand side with Cameron Munster where Cameron Munster lives. There's two big attacking threats there. Uh, another example is we've identified and highlighted elite fullbacks in the game. When a line break is made, the elite fullbacks will come down the middle third of the field in support. And there's a really good example against the Cowboys last Saturday night. Very good short side play there by the Knights, but have a look at Callum Ponga back inside there um, of Dominic Young, and he'll go and score underneath the six. But that there for young fullbacks watching at home or, or coaches who coach developing teams, talk to your fullbacks about pushing through that middle third of the field on any line break. The ball will come back and find them, and you'll see Carlin, um, you know, go around there near the sticks and, and convert the try. The other thing that the Blues need to be aware of is, is Kalen in the backfield out of yardage, so either on an inside ball option of a Christian Welsh or a Josh uh, Papalihi or one of the Ruck. If the Queensland forwards can create momentum, there's a real chance that Kalen Ponga can blow up the middle third of the Blues team there. You can see against the Cowboys, only needed a little bit of an opening there with regards to eight defenders being a little bit wide. And he goes through, makes the line break and puts Dominic Young away for the Knights team. So I thought they were a couple of really, um, you know, telling weapons for the, the Knights on Saturday night. And I think they're going to help Cherry Evans and in particular Munster because Carlin does like to live on the left-hand side of the field, which is Munster's side of the field. So expect them to throw plenty of punches against the Blues next Wednesday. Just one other thing to point out, um, Zach, is with regards to Carlin Ponga, working with him really closely, he's got fantastic vision. So as a ball player... Uh, he makes good decisions, but he's got the vision. And I thought I'd show our viewers an example from the weekend. This is a great kick by Mitchell Pearce. Um, Jake Clifford and Mitchell Pearce did a really good job with regards to their kicking game on Saturday night. But what I liked about this, the ball ends up in Carlin Ponga's hands and you see him look up and he looks where defenders are not. So there's an opportunity for him to run himself. The gap closes pretty quickly. And then there's an opportunity to get the ball out there with a the left foot kick to Dominic Young, the left-hand side winger for the Knights. And that reminds me, that try there reminds me of game three, Queensland versus New South Wales last year when Cameron Munster did that, um, you know, kick that we highlighted a couple of weeks ago to the right-hand side of the field. And Edric Lee scored. Um, in the corner there for the Queensland side in, in game three last year, which was a really telling play. But Carl Ponga brings plenty of speed, plenty of attacking threats, plenty of vision. But what I like about Carl and what I think he can help the Queensland side with is the defensive organisation of their team. All right, so Carl and Pong was returned. Is it enough to earn the Maroons a win in Origin 3? They've been absolutely torn apart. Ex-greats have come, or greats, Maroons greats have come in and said, it wasn't the fact that they lost those games, it's the way that they lost those games that is the real issue. So can he be the difference? Oh, look, Callan's going to make the Queensland side stronger. Look, Zach, I think 
76 to 6 says it all in games one and games two. There's a, a big gap between the two teams. The beauty of State of Origin is, um, and, and game three is now a dead rubber. It'd be great if it was alive, but it's a dead rubber. The beauty of State of Origin is, historically over the years, when Queensland have their backs against the wall, they come up with a performance. Now, that might not get the result, but I expect Queensland to come up with a performance they'll make their um, state and their supporters proud of. And I think Kalen can be part of that. I think he will help. Cameron Munster and Daly Cherry, Cherry Evans in particular with regards to their attack, which has been very clunky in games one and two. Look what T Tommy Turbo has done for, for, for Daly Cherry Evans at club level. I think Callum Ponga can certainly help free up um, you know, Daly on Wednesday night. And uh, I expect the uh, the Queensland side to put up a respect respectable performance. But is it going to be enough? I don't think so. I think the Blues have got too good of a side and that's tough for me to say as a Queenslander as well, mate. All right, well, best of luck to yourself and all those other uh, Queensland fans out there on Wednesday night. Good on you, Zach. Anthony Seabold, thank you once again for your analysis. Thank you to all of our viewers tuning in for the game plan. We can't wait for State of Origin 3 next Wednesday night.